Hello, my name is Emily Bynan and today I'm going to talk about vibrato. Vibrato is rather a delicate topic because it's possibly our most personal means of expression. Composers indeed use certain words to inspire us to use more warmth in the sound. Espressivo, dolce, cantabile, dolcissimo, they all indicate a certain something in the sound. But who's to say whether they mean a small, shimmering, fast vibrato or a slower, warmer, fuller kind of vibrato? It's only recently the composers have started indicating the kind of vibrato they actually want. And in my experience, more often than not, they don't want any. So maybe we should draw our own conclusions from that. In Baroque and classical music, you'll probably want to consider using very little vibrato, whilst maintaining a warm, resonant sound. Today, I'm going to share with you four of my favorite vibrato exercises, which I use. I don't play them perfectly. If I did, I wouldn't have to practice them but I hope that they'll inspire you to explore and experiment with vibrato yourself. So let's start with the first exercise and that's pulsing vibrato. In this exercise, we establish the beginnings of vibrato on the flute and they start from your belly. So say, huh? And that's the beginning of vibrato. So I'd like you to imagine your diaphragm like a big trampoline. At the beginning, we're going to take slow, high jumps. And as we get faster, we stay closer and closer to the surface of the trampoline until at the end, we remain in contact, but we remain in motion. You'll probably experience the vibrato moving higher up in your body as you get faster. And that's fine, as long as you remember that vibrato starts in your belly, the bottom of the air column, and that is your diaphragm. So let's get started. We're going to play a low register G in a comfortable dynamic without any vibrato at all. And you can breathe whenever you want in this exercise. And give your tongue a rest as well, because all the articulation we're going to use is that huh from the belly. Then we're gonna move on to two pulses a bar. And then we're going to skip to four pulses in the bar. And then on to six, all the while keeping the ha articulation from the belly. Then we move on to eight. And to 12 notes in a bar. And then on to 16. Around now, it's starting to resemble something like vibrato. And we've got 20 notes in a bar. At 24 notes in the bar, that feels like quite a comfortable measured vibrato to me. And my personal goal is 28. It doesn't always work. Let's see if today works. So take a different note each day to learn how each note responds differently to vibrato. And now we're going to move on to the second exercise, vibrato variation. This exercise is based on Marcel Moyse's book, De la Sonorité, the first exercise. And the purpose is to be able to switch on and off your vibrato and to increase and decrease its presence. So I practice it in four ways, but you can imagine your own variations. The first way, I start with no vibrato, and then I warm up the second note. 
The second way is to start the first note with vibrato and then the second note completely straight. The third way is almost a crescendo of vibrato, if you like. So at the moment of the change of the note, we have the maximum vibrato. And then we reduce again at the end of the second note. The fourth way is the other way around. We start with vibrato in the sound and then we reduce it until the moment of the change of note. And that's almost without any vibrato. And then we increase it again at the end. And now we're going to move on to the third exercise, instant vibrato. This is another exercise based on Marcel Moyse's book, De la Sonorité. And he wrote the exercise to practice the tongue out kind of articulation, which you can use for this exercise if you want, but you don't have to. I'm going to set the metronome on a crotchet or a quarter note is 60. And then on the syncopations, I'm going to play three quick articulated notes with a diminuendo. For step two, I repeat the same rhythm. So on a syncopation, three notes. But now I'm going to articulate only the first one. And the second and third notes, I articulate with a ha huh from the belly. Ta ha ha. Ta ha ha. In step three, I play six notes on the first beat, articulated, da 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 da. And then step four is replicating the same energy of sound, but with a vibrato. So ta ha 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 ha, ta ha 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 ha. Or, Steps five and six are exactly the same, but just the two notes are turned around. And once again, practice this starting on a different note every day to see how different notes respond to vibrato. And now we're going to move on to counted vibrato. In this exercise, I practice how I can vary the speed of vibrato within a phrase to shape it. You can use any piece for this exercise, but I've chosen today to use one of Marcel Moise's 24 little melodic studies. The first time through, I imagine which rhythm I want to emulate in the end for vibrato, and I articulate that, literally with the tongue every note, da da da. Then the second time through, I copy that rhythm, but now with vibrato using ha 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 kind of gesture. Of course, it will feel very artificial, but try recording yourself and I think you'll be surprised at how natural it sounds in the end. So those are my four favourite vibrato exercises, but of course, feel free to explore and experiment yourself. The most important thing is that you keep your ears and your eyes open and notice what kind of vibrato inspires you. 
So I hope you've enjoyed it. See you next time.